Hello again. Uh, some of you have already listened to some of these uh, beautiful poems written by Rubén Darío uh, many years ago, about a hundred years. And uh, my book, the translation of Darío's poems, contain uh, 100 poems of Rubén Darío's in English and Spanish. This is useful material to language teachers uh, since they can use these poems to have their students recite them in talent shows, for example. I'm going to read another poem in, in which Ruben Darío compa compares human nature with animal nature. In this case, the main character is a wolf, and the name of the poem is The Wolf Reason. The good man with his heart pure as a lily, a care of soul and a celestial tongue, diminutive sweet Francis of Assisi, Met with a creature bloodthirsty and grim, bestial, fearsome, thieving and ravaging, nothing of pity or remorse, remorse in him. The wolf of Govio, the terrible wolf, rabbit have drooling calm countryside, ferociously slaughters whole flocks by himself, devour rams and ewe lambs, even shepherds, causing much carnage, most wastage of you. Hunters arms with pitchforks and scythes fled at the sight of his long yellow fangs. He tore out the throats of the dogs. Hopeless wives prayed and prepared to yield up their lives. Who could live in such a dread of such a pangs? St. Francis went out. He looked for the wolf. He searched out the wolf in his den. And there, near the cave, he encountered the best which launched itself fiercely at him. With his deep voice, good Francis, raising his hand, said to the mild carnivore, Peace, brother wolf. This look at man in his sackcloth he always wore, and was less churlish, a bit less than before, and curling his lip, his demeanor, showing his chin, his mind, a belt dinner. Very well, brother Francis, what have you to say? The saint exclaimed, What? Does the law now decree that you live by rapine and death? The blood that revoltingly runs down that muscles from hell? The hideous dread you cause and you spread? The cry of the farmer, the grieving and shrill lament of the poor creature lent us by our Lord? Can't you temper your hellish will? Are you infernal? Did billion lose billions sulfur as hell inspire you rancor eternal? And the humble great wolf, well, here the winter is hard. The fastings of virtue, famines of vice, in the forest all eyes. When there is nothing to eat, I go no south some like the stuff that's nice. And at times it both shepherd and sheep. And the gore, I see more. From the hunter on horseback, a gossip on his wrist, or chasing the stag or the bear or the boar, and more often than not, the blood is on wounds and torture, his horns brassy blur, drowning their sigh and their cry as they die. Those creatures of God are true lure, and nor was just just for mere hunger pangs, he went out a hunting a bearing of fangs, responded good Francis. In man there exists a kind of ferment of leaven, the born into sin is intended for heaven. It is sad for the bit soul is simple and pure. You're going to have for now, I assure, always something tasted to it. You must in this hill live forever in peace. The shepherds, the sheep and their fleece. May our great con Lord make you suffer a mile who were nurturing mountains of wild. All right, brother Francis, now before God who binds and unbinds here and in heaven, let's be joined before him a sign of good faith. The wolf then offered the brother his paw, which Francis took in his strong war hand. They were all them went to the village, the people also, a prayer they could not understand. After the holy man came the first wolf, his head humbly bowed, following calm like a little pet dog or a newborn ewe lamb. Francis called the people out into the square and preached there. Here is what he said. 
We can now enjoy pleasantness pour with our friend. Brother Wolf who comes with me gently. He swear that he's never seen us as his enemy and will not repeat his attacks. You in turn give him fur, a hearty brotherhood, so that nothing lacks to this fellow creature of God. So be it, shouted they all, and soon now content the great gray wolf went, wagging his tail with Francis entered the convent. For some time the wolf was wholly at peace, in a refuge so quiet and calm, his huge ear attended the sweet psalm, and his bright eyes would turn moist and glisten, as he learned a thousand graces and games with the gentle friars in the kitchen. And when Francis preached, the wolf, free though all lost, licked the gray dust from the warm sandals of the saint's feet. The wolf walked in the street. He reached on the hill and down the valley. He entered the houses, friend gave him to it, as to the greyhounds, grateful and asleep. But one day, St. Francis went away. And what of our beautiful wolf, the fine upright wolf, so tame and so good, disappeared. He returned to the hills, whereas of the old hideous howls made the night fretful, turning the bowels of his former neighbors and shepherds their flocks. The wolf returning to his ever renewed the old alarm of terror. Arms and bravery serve for nothing, since the fierce beast thing his madness and range offers no truth. Like Moloch and Satan of war, the good little saint came back to the town, was assaulted with grumblings and tears. With a thousand complaints, the citizen cry of what they put up with and suffer so much for the infamous devil, the wolf. St. Francis of Assis, they could be severe. He climbed up all land on the rocky hills to look for the false carnivorous wolf, a saintly man I warned could be a man to fear. And when he reached the den of the ravaging beast, he addressed him sternly thus, in the name of the Father of the sacred universe, I conjure you, O savage wolf, to answer why you have returned so perverse I'm waiting. Answer, I expect proof. The wolf seemed to struggle, mouth dripping with foam. But look at the saint in the eyes and dryly observe. Brother Francis, please do not approach very near. I was happy to live in your convent. In the village I went out in and out. With a gift for food I was content. And I ate gently what was put on my plate. But in every house I began to see hate, envy, passion, and anger. And in all the faces shone danger, like live coals of hate and lewdness, infamy, lies. Brothers against their own brothers may war, the weak lost, the evil won. Men and women were like dog and bitch, and beware. One fine day, all beasts, all of them beat me with the sticks and they tore out patches of my hair. I felt lowly. I tried to give gentle licks to their hands and their feet. I followed your sacred law. Men were my brothers. My brother were stars. My brother were oxen and worms and nudgers. The men, my love brothers, they cudgel me and drove me out of town. Their sneers and their shouts carrying all oil on my back running down. And then in my entrails, the furnace revived. I suddenly felt like a wolf, but better by far than those men I have left. I began once again to struggle to live, to care for my needs, to find food, as the bird does, as does a wild boar who has to kill to survive. Abandon me here to the mountain now. Leave me here on the crag in the wild. Let me live out my life free, as was meant to be. It cannot be beguiled by your virtues. Follow your road, Brother Francis. Follow your sanctity. The saint of Assisi said nothing, but with a sad face looked long at the wolf and left in tears, disconsolate. And he spoke to the eternal God in his heart. 
the wind of the forest raised up his prayer through the pure high mountain air. His plea started this way, his heart nearly ridden, Father, our Father who art in heaven. Once again, thank you very much. This is another uh, great production, uh, originally written in Spanish by Glenn Deville, and now translated by Rolando Telles, um, who is a professor of literature, a professor of translator, translation, and a writer. Thank you very much. Once again, you can look at my uh, blog, www.nicaraguanbooks.blogspot.com. Good night.